that I am pleased now to introduce to you today our first speaker, our Chancellor, Michelle Marks. Dr. Marks joined the university in July 2020, an innovator dedicated to making higher education equitable for the good of society. She's a convener, a team builder, who starts with the question, why? In just over a year, she's already moved the needle significantly toward equity. And CU Denver is lucky to have her. Everyone, please put your hands together and welcome to the stage our Chancellor, the phenomenal Michelle Marks. Thank you. Wow. Hello, everybody. It's so good to see you and like your whole full bodies here today. How about that vision video? Pretty cool, huh? I love that. Um, this is the vision that you painted for CU Denver. It's one that inspires every single thing that we do together, and I couldn't be prouder. So welcome to CU Denver's first ever Future Fest. So Theo is one of 40 new faculty members that have joined us this year at CU Denver, who's, it's an incredibly talented group. Their expertise ranges from healthcare system financing to the intersection of urban planning and air pollution to particle acceleration. I want to thank everybody um, who helped plan this incredible event from our events team to the communications team. This is incredibly innovative. So how many students do we have here today in the audience? Can you put your hand up if you're a student? Can we give them a round of applause? Thank you so much for joining us today at Future Fest. It's Future Fest because you are the future. I, I want to start today with some incredible news. As you know, we at CU Denver together see higher education as a tool to transform lives, and we believe that access to a great education should be available to all learners, not just the privileged few. And um, now our commitment to change the trajectory of students' lives is being recognized nationally. Two weeks ago, the US News and World Report released the rankings for social mobility, which is an indicator for how low-income students are succeeding here. And this year, CU Denver jumped more than 50 spots. We are now ranked number one in Colorado on the social mobility scale, and number 55 in the nation. We did this together. So if you, um, like Theo and like me, have just joined CU Denver, have been here for one or two years or less, um, whether you're a faculty member, a student, or staff, can you raise your hand? Thank you all for choosing to come to CU Denver and work and learn here. Congratulations to all of you. You bring great perspective. And um, for those of you who bring wisdom and contribution, who've helped CU Denver grow over the years and achieve all of our tremendous achievements since our founding in 1973, how many of you have been here for from three to 10 years? Wow, congratulations to all of you guys. And how many of you have been here 11 years or longer as part of this community? Wow, you have seen so much change. Thank you for your incredible efforts, everybody, over the past year and a half to get us through one of what has to be the most challenging times ever in memory. Um, and thank you for helping us accomplish so much to position us for the years ahead, sincerely. We have an incredible program lined up for you today. First, I'm going to share some highlights of our recent successes and exciting things in store for us this year. And then we're going to hear from our new campus leaders about what brought them to Denver and what they're most excited about for this year. And then we're going to be treated to a lightning round of presentations on the scholarship and research of our faculty and our staff and our students. And I think you're going to enjoy this. I know I will. Um, and then after the program, we're going to have some time to catch up with each other. Many of us haven't seen each other in person for a while. Um, we have refreshments and giveaways and food trucks and places to sign up for activities that, that we're going to talk about today that you might want to be involved with. And if I haven't had a chance to meet any of you, I hope you come up to me afterwards after the program and introduce yourselves. When I reflect back on the 15 months that I have been at CU Denver, I am both humbled and heartened. I'm humbled because of the grace and stamina that truly that all of you have shown in maneuvering through these tumultuous times, that's for sure. Um, I'm also heartened when I see the incredible work that you have done to help CU Denver emerge stronger than we have ever been before. And speaking of the pandemic, 
thanks to the hard work of everyone in this community, we have achieved the safe return of our community campus twice, in fact, partially in person last year, fully back this year. And this is also at a time when so many schools are having mass quarantines and shutdowns, and our safety has been a standout success. From the beginning of this pandemic through today, we've had absolutely no evidence of classroom spread, our case numbers are low, and of course that safety is further enabled by the availability of vaccinations, um, which is our, still our best defense against COVID. And I'm happy to say that 97% of our employees, of our faculty and staff are vaccinated, and 93% of our students are vaccinated. So let's cheer for that. Um, I do know that there's a lot of anxiety out there for all of us as we return to campus, but I've heard so many stories from our community members about how with our practices in place, people are really glad to be back. And I'm glad to be in person with you today. Students, those of you who are here, are you glad to be back? Yeah. Yeah, all right, great. Let's talk for a minute about our physical campus. This space that we're gathering here looks very different than it looked even a year ago today. And it's had a pretty much a makeover in the last decade for those of you who've been here for longer. Just in the last month, we've celebrated three transformational events and additions to this neighborhood. Last month, we opened City Heights, which is our new first year residence hall on campus, right in the middle of campus. 555 beds for first year students, um, and it's full. And they've joined our largest, um, second largest cl starting class ever, and, um, and we're thrilled. And last week, we celebrated the opening of the third floor of the Learning Commons, which is the building just adjacent to us. For the first time ever, we have a hub solely uh, uh, dedicated to our faculty, all kinds of faculty. And we've never had that kind of space before. It has lockers and a kitchen and places for faculty across the campus to connect and collaborate and create learning environments together. And also, our mascot became larger than life last week when we unveiled a thousand pound eight foot tall bronze statue right over there. It's a little hard to see, but I hope you passed it as you walked in. And if you didn't get a chance to see it, you should take a look. I know that this is going to be the site of many photographs at graduation um, in the future. And for those of you who have, have been around, you also know that the Student Commons building opened up in 2014. And the building behind me, the Rob and Lola Salazar Wellness Center, opened up in 2015. So we have taken on a whole new campus presence. And we did this together. So as of June, we also have a new 2030 strategic plan. When we kicked off this really amazing strategic planning effort in January, I challenged this community to dream big and to blaze a path for us that capitalize on our strengths and, um, and do it in less than six months <laughs> and in the middle of a pandemic. And it was a lot to ask, but you more than rose to the occasion. And 3,000 of you, students, faculty, staff, alumni, community members, employers, participated in this process. And we did it using homegrown talent like Chris Wood, who I saw here today somewhere, and his team of faculty and staff and students from Imworks and the Comcast Center, who used design thinking tools to help guide this process. We did this together. And the title of our plan is Make education work for all. And it's designed to create social mobility for students whose success is not guaranteed. Um, make education work for all expresses how we'll shape ourselves into a university that Colorado and the nation need, but that they currently lack. And I know that many of you know our five goals by heart. And if you don't already, we're going to be sharing fun ways um, today for, to help you remember them. And our plan and our goals are ambitious and inspirational. Um, but we know that we need to do more than dream big. We need to act. We need to become the powerful engine of opportunity that we know we have the potential to be. These goals have to become actionable. And so we've been working over the summer to make the shift from planning to executing. And with input from so many of you, we're creating roadmaps that set priorities and direct resources to realize our ambitions. I think I need to stand this way. <laughs> and, and we have planned so many different ways to engage you in that process. Um, but there are some things that we know we need to get started on right now. So let me tell you a little bit about the things that we're going to get started on right now. 
first of all, number one goal is become the nation's first equity-serving institution. Last April, our equity task force set the goal for CU Denver to become an exemplar equ equity-serving institution. And this task force doubled as a vision team for the strategic plan. So this is the first goal in our plan. And I'm so excited about the incredible progress that we've already made in a short amount of time under a year to position ourselves to really move the needle. Since the task force set out the roadmap last spring, um, I announced a commitment of $4 million to the effort, and we already have a leg up on implementation in this area. Just a few highlights. We're going to be implementing equity-minded professional development eventually for everybody, but we're starting this fall with me and with my cabinet and associate assistant deans and deans and associate assistant vice chancellors and vice chancellors. We're going to do it. And as, a, um, uh, as we progress towards a federal recognition as a Hispanic-serving institution and as an Asian-American native American Pacific Islander serving institution. We're working to better support all of our students in, our, in this community. We've already submitted for millions of dollars of grants to do just this. Um, and um, also this year, we're asking all of our units, our academic units and, 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 and administrative units, to start planning to diversify our faculty and staff. Our plans are ambitious, and we also know that there's no turnkey solutions, but we will be moving to implement this year and every single year until our goal of being a true equity-serving institution is realized. We can do this together. Goal number two, become a university for life. Our second goal is for CU Denver to become a university of life, which means providing educational access um, to an ex access to an excellent education for everyone age 17 to 117. We know that the shelf life of new knowledge in this world is getting shorter and shorter. And we know that more learners need new and affordable ways to access education across their whole lives and shifting careers. And we know that what we aim for is to deliver education, relevant education that fits with the practical reality of people's lives whenever and wherever they need it. So our first step this year is to develop a strategic enrollment plan that focuses on the learners that we do serve, um, including students coming from us to us from high schools in Colorado and outside Colorado and our beloved international students. And um, that focuses also on, on students transferring from other institutions like community colleges and our first generation students who we love so much and our vets and our working students and our parent students. All of these students need education delivered more flexibly to meet the demands of their lives. We've learned so many lessons about online learning during the pandemic, including the most effective formats um, in terms of the way that we offer classes. It's increasingly clear that the future of education is not only inside of the classroom, and it's not only behind a screen, it's both. And learners need new ways of learning that work for their lives. So this year, we'll be working on a CU Denver-focused campus-based strategy for digital learning. Goal number three. On the research front, Provost Nakuma and Chief um, uh, Research Officer Marty Dunn will be collaborating with the deans and faculty and our staff this fall to activate goal number three, which is to be known internationally for our research and our creative work impacting five of society's grand challenges. We're kicking off this effort with the Strategic Plan Research Symposium, which is going to be a series of two Friday morning sessions on October 29th and November 19th. And um, we're going to bring the best ideas from our community on our research and our creative works and figure out where we should invest to enhance the impact and create national prominence. And by spring, we're going to have determined our first two grand challenges and allocate seed funding, funding to get those efforts off and running. And I'm thrilled about that. The fact that we are a research university, frankly, the research university in the heart of the city is one of our key differentiators. And we're going to bring this community together, this diversity of researchers and artists and, um, and designers, and break down those disciplinary boundaries and create innovative and impactful solutions to the society's most challenging problems. Goal number four, building an innovation district. Our fourth goal leverages this incredible location, which I can't believe every time I look up and around. We are one of the coolest cities in America, and we're going to build an open innovation district right here 
all around our campus that brings together faculty and staff and students with community members and entrepreneurs, and business leaders, um, and civic leaders and government to foster new forms of entrepreneurship and economic development and partnership and transformative education. It's a big idea. And we're already in conversations beginning to crystallize that vision. And this year, we're going to check off two major boxes in this area. One is um, we're going to determine the specific niche that our innovation district will fill for Denver. And we're going to leverage the grand challenges that we identify in goal number three to do so, and including partnerships with industry and the, the needs of our community and the ambitions of our city and state. And also, and this is exciting, we are finally going to move forward on the construction of a new building to house interdisciplinary computing and engineering as the first anchor building for our innovation district. <laughs> I know, that's great. I know that we've been working on this for years. And I also know that we've been hoping that the state is going to fund this building. But honestly, we can't wait any longer. And so we're still going to be working with the state and hoping for their partnership. But we're going to also launch an ambitious fundraising campaign to get this effort going. And late this fall and into the spring, we're going to engage our community and a design firm to define what we need from this new space. It's terrific for us. These are two huge steps forward to defining a vibrant innovation district for our community, for our city, and for our state. And finally, best place to work. It's fitting that this bats clean up with goal five, being a people-centered best place to work, because you, our faculty and staff, are the reason our students are here. And we heard loud and clear over the strategic planning work that we did last year that we need to do more to support you. You said it was critical to take real steps to create a culture of empowerment for people and provide tangible opportunities for career development and for success. And we are listening. So our first step, and this is also exciting, to becoming a people-centered best place to work is, for the first time ever, to hire a CU Denver-specific chief people officer who is going to lead our work in creating an organizational culture that is focused on trust, empowerment, and collaboration. This is a new model for us, and these are our values. And we intend to live them by honoring um, the humanity and the talent and the incredible hard work that is, um, is so meaningful to us. We want to make work impactful, and we want to make it fun. And we also heard clearly over the last year that we need to do better for our instructional research and clinical faculty. And I'm thrilled that Provost Nakuma has already changed, charged um, a task force with developing recommendations to improve the IRC faculty experience. I think their report is going to be to us by the end of November, and I can't wait to see the recommendations. I'm confident that these investments are going to put us on a path to making all of our employees feel valued and supported in their personal and uh, professional development. So as we seek to accomplish these goals, these are five ambitious strategic plan goals, um, we also need to create a stronger culture of, of philanthropy. It's a must, and we can no longer be a best kept secret. We intend to shout our specialness from the rooftops. The time for CU Denver to be the meek, proverbial underdog, it is over. So let me conclude by committing to this work together. As one powerful university, we're going to expand the impact and the value that we deliver to our families, to our states, to society over the next decade. We're going to need everyone's help. Um, and we're going to need everyone's ideas and everyone's contributions. This is our moment. This is our time to realize our powerful potential to be a true equity-serving institution that provides opportunity, strengthens democracy, and indeed works for all. We will do this together. And I can't tell you how excited I am about the next chapter. There is no place that I would rather be, no work that I would rather doing, and no people that I'd rather be doing it with than all of you. And I'm going to go out now the way I came in with an inspiring video filmed with the help of many of you in our community.